nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And um, so what was your part in this whole beautification project? Well, I was one of the co-chairs of it, and there was three of us who were kind of co-chair. But my official thing was uh, on May the 11th, I was sort of the site manager. So I managed all of the, whatever, all the activity that happened here during that day and made sure that everybody knew what they were going to do. We had great team leaders. We just you know, made sure everybody uh, was on the same page so we get this thing done, and we did. How did this project get started? Like, what, what prompted it? Was it? It was uh, Rick Westlake, and it was actually at a Churchill Grove Neighborhood Association in September. Him and his wife had come by here, and at that time, um, th th walking, and they had seen these overgrown ornamental grasses, and they didn't even know it was a veteran's memorial because you couldn't read any of these walls. And there were four plaques and he uh, uh, that, that are on the corner walls, and he started reading them. He came back. And he asked us at the uh, vet, at our uh, uh, at our meeting, you know, is this is this what we want to? Is this the portrayal that we want for our veterans? And everybody said no. And from then on, it just you know the, the association adopted it as a project, and then we uh, were a committee that was formed after it. We reached out to all of the neighborhoods. Every surrounding neighborhood had a role in this project. Wow, I even heard neighborhoods like people came from Belgium. Yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of people come uh, from, from you know, some good ways away uh, to do this. We even, now that's just for this project, for the flower boxes, uh, the uh, Veterans Hospital in Madison actually adopted one of those. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah, we had a great, uh, uh, it was a, you know, it was a great response. We couldn't have asked, you know, we couldn't have asked for a better response from the community, local businesses, especially volunteers. We had about 350 people show up. And even though this was independently sport supported by neighbors in the neighborhood and stuff, you got a lot of support from the city? Yeah, we really did. I mean, you know, the reality is this is city property and we're on a state street. Uh, uh, and, you know, we were kind of uh, like worried about that. But the, but the city, especially the Public Works Department and the 1st District of uh, the Police Department, they just supported us from day one. About that is that uh, they gave us a lot of ideas, and the really good thing about the public works is that they became our go-between between, between you know, there's some city re there's state requirements, and they really kind of became our buffer between uh, uh, what we were doing in IDOT to make sure we were complying with some of the requirements, specific requirements that IDOT had. So you know, they kind of they didn't interfere in a sense of of you know wanting to control everything, but they were well kept informed as to whatever what, what was happening. Well, and, that's, uh, uh, That was important. Yeah, that support is important. And Auburn, was it Auburn High School? The Auburn Our Junior Auburn? ROTC program came and they uh, uh, they adopted this as their uh, service project for 2019. And we had around 100. Uh, there, some people say it was 75. The 75 came in buses. <laughs> there was about 25, a little more than 25 that came uh, actually in car. Wow. So it was great. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to do it as fast as we were. They worked very, very hard. Okay. And Ernie, is there anything else on your mind that you think that's notable or that would be nice to get out there as far as no, uh, I, your experience here? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, one is that uh, when we were doing this, there were really two things. One is to obviously create a fitting tribute to our veterans, but the other one is to continue to make public people aware that there are some... Uh, there's some uh, integration issues with some of our veterans, and uh, uh, you know we're, we're we're losing too many of them to suicide, and we wanted to make sure that you know we portray a support to our veterans, at the same time bring awareness that this problem is real, and uh, uh, it's a community that's going to solve it, not necessarily you know one organization going individually to uh, to a veteran. It's really going to be a community. That's going to uh, to make the impact the difference.
veteran is someone who has gone to war because his nation tells him or her to. They come from all different races, creeds, colors, faiths, and socioeconomic backgrounds. It was ingrained in every one of them that they must follow orders as they are legally, as long as they are legally, ethically, or morally correct. They have raised the right hand and swore to an oath. They solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and to bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I thought it interesting to hear a veteran add in his own words, in the breach between the things we cherish and the forces that would harm them, steps the soldier. But along with that noble valor comes consequences for some. Veterans come back with PTSD, other symptoms of war, physically, emotionally. We know that we have 15,000 plus here in the Rockford area veterans. We know that approximately 20 veterans a day across our country commit suicide. Douglas MacArthur was quoted as saying, the soldier above all others pray for peace. For it is the soldier who must suffer and bear the deepest wounds and scars of war. So, for all of those individuals that are here today as veterans, please don't forget that this is here to honor you. Thank you. Next, we have a video address from Mayor Tom McNamara. This is incredibly important for the city of Rockford. As in our county, we have about 15,000 veterans, and we know veterans have risked their lives to protect us here domestically as well as abroad. We're also really fortunate in the city of Rockford that we have services for our veterans. We have two VA service centers. We have service organizations in our community. We have a veteran drop-in center. We even have a specific unit over at Rose Grants for veterans. This is really important because veterans face so much, and not just when they're abroad, risking their lives for our community, for citizens across America, but they face so much when they return home. And it's incumbent on us to make sure that they have the services they need. Some of the things that they face when they come home is PTSD. Four out of five veterans with PTSD Continues to do 
uh, many things for our community by sitting on various boards. His wife, Sally, uh, even Rick and Helen and Ernie have uh, given kudos to Sally, who is, who is president of the Churchill's Grove Neighborhood Association and really was uh, instrumental in backing this effort as well. We thank you, Sally, wherever you are. Are you here, Sally, back there? Can you stand and, and uh, thank you? The, the Mark family does so much in our community, and much of it is under the radar. So I'd like to thank him. And, and uh, I had to stop him. My goodness, that was getting big. Dark. You know, it's interesting. On the program, we have uh, uh, the current alderman, uh, third board. Then we have the mayor, who was the third board alderman, and now the oldest uh, alderman here today. Uh, that would be me. Uh, hey, I am, I am just honored to be here, and I first wanted to also thank uh, Rick uh, Westlake and Ernie and Helen Redfern for their their leadership uh, in this whole project. Uh, last Sunday, Sally and I were walking down the street, and there those three were sitting on the berm, uh, still talking about the last few things they needed to get planted on Sunday. So, uh, Ernie and Helen and, and Rick, thank you uh, again. You know, uh, just a little historic walk down the, the lane is that uh, IDOT would never fix North Main Street until they fixed uh, Auburn and Main. And so uh, the long process began of what intersection we would have and what it would look like, uh, whether it be a major four-lane intersection uh, with turn lanes, which would have taken everything in this area away, or something that was the most functional, uh, which was a roundabout. Uh, I'm reminded of that and, and thinking of the people, uh, former Alderman Bill Tim, uh, Alderman John Beck, uh, former uh, Mayor Larry Morrissey, and, and former uh, City Administrator Jim Ryan, uh, who really helped uh, in that whole process. And you know, it's really hard to believe that not everybody was in favor of a roundabout. <laughs> but the majority were. We can see today what has transpired and how fitting with the Greenwood Cemetery is uh, next door where so many of our, our veterans are interred. Uh, the Camp Fuller, which is probably about five blocks away until a couple years ago, the medical building was still standing uh, on North Main Street. Uh, the soldier who spent some time here uh, at our intersection as well. And then when we dedicated this, uh, Jim Ryan, uh, his comments were, it is so fitting today raised the garrison American flag for the first time in honor of our veterans who serve the cause of freedom. And we dedicate this place called Veterans Memorial Circle. We can look to the northwest corner. We are reminded of the buried bodies of so many souls who served our nation's forces where they are interred. And the American flag flying in the middle of Veterans Memorial Circle as a timeless tribute to every soldier. You know, the city who built the roundabout is like the city. They, they put together a great body. But it's the people who give it the soul. Uh, and as we saw last week, when 400 volunteers came together to plant over 6,500 plants and put an all-day effort into a quality, kind of cool day, that is the soul of what our city represents in our neighborhoods. So to be at the center of this, to be at the crossroads of four great neighborhoods, Churchill Grove, Edgewater, uh, Signal Hill, and North End Square. The people of Rockford established Veterans Memorial Circle on Veterans Day in the year 2013 in deep and abiding gratitude to the members of our community who served in the armed forces of the United States, from the fields of Gettysburg to the beaches of Normandy, to the hills of North Korea, to the jungles of Vietnam, to the desert, desert sands of the Persian Gulf, to battlefields yet unknown, defending our nation's honor, fighting for freedom, loving people everywhere. Let us rededicate ourselves to this and never forget. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Next we have a poem recital. Terry Dyer uh, from Veterans Memorial Hall.
on behalf of the uh, Board of Trustees of Greenwood Cemetery, I'm honored to represent the trustees, and I thank Alderman Thunberg and uh, all of you who have been such an active part of this effort for inviting me on behalf of um, the effort. Um, I love Greenwood Cemetery. It is across the street. We are longtime stakeholders here, longer than you might know. Greenwood Cemetery was formed in 1845, and it was moved to its present location in 1852, when the rail was coming uh, into the south uh, west Rockford by Tinker Cottage. I, whoops, <laughs> Um, I, I think of cemeteries as being very um, misunderstood someplace, sometimes. Cemeteries in those days, in the last century, were formed um, to be park-like, to be beautiful, for people to even have picnics in them. Um, they were a place where we reconnected with uh, family friends, um, those, those now and, and present, and those who are no longer with us. And for me, the cemetery is a tangible, a very tangible reminder of the continuity. They're the affirmation for me that um, we are not here forever, that those who came before us, we owe so much. And for those uh, who come later, we want them to learn about what builds strong countries, strong communities, strong efforts. I, I hope today that you will accept our invitation to rediscover the beauty of Greenwood Cemetery. Uh, I, I, I hesitate to even mention it, but there are so many people who are taken by cemeteries and they think they're morbid or they're ghastly or ghostly, whatever. And I don't, I don't buy into that. I, I hope that you will accept this invitation to stroll through this beautiful park-like place. Greenwood is um, a nature preserve. It is, as we've been discussing lately, about neighborhood places of, of meditation and, and contemplation. And Greenwood is there for you. Please, please come in and enjoy it. Today, I think mostly that there is an opportunity there to have a dialogue between the past and our present. We have um, members of, of our uh, married community there uh, represent every war, including the Revolutionary War. So we are highly, and as it was already mentioned, we are highly um, uh, filled with the memory of the wars. And in the focus of today, uh, the, the, there are so many lessons of patriotism of um, heroism, of hardship, hardship at home, families that were left, uh, mothers who carried on um, during World War II, particularly, um, as my, my, mother, my mother did, and also of deliverance, that here was delivered um, peace and everlasting rest to those who served. I. Um, I want to uh, also uh, make you aware that there is a wonderful, wonderful chapel there, Greenwood Chapel. And we would love um, to have the community come together to reinvent that chapel and perhaps to be a place where, where veterans can be memorialized and the facility could be once again used. But, Nobody's touching Greenwood Cemetery. It is there, it is there forever, and it is for us to love it as a real stakeholder in an old neighborhood in Rockford. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mary Ann. I know you speak from the heart. Your uh, involvement with Greenwood and the undertaking of some of the projects that you've uh, been involved with uh, are much appreciated by the community. Thank you. Thank you. Next, our own Harlan Jefferson is going to play America the Beautiful. And um, I'm here to tell you that for some people it doesn't take very long. 
there's VIPs and there's VDPs. VIPs are very impressive people. They are the Rick and Reese of Westlakes. They are the Ernie and Helens. Uh, they are the Sally and Dogs. They are the people that work, and certainly Chad's, and Marianne, and all these people, and the good general that we're going to hear from shortly. Very impressive people. And then there's also very draining people. These are the people that let the air out of your balloon. You know, you put together a project like this, and for those of us that had the privilege of being here a week ago Saturday, and seeing all this come together, being a part of it all, of it coming together, it was a sight to behold, it truly was. The coordination between the police, between volunteers, between those in charge, it was absolutely magnificent. And it's something that I, I, I literally cannot get over. So I, I just share how impressive that was. But what's so impressive about it is this community, and obviously I'm going to say the, the four communities that were just mentioned um, in the quadrant here, it's just a microcosm of what Rockford is all about. People giving back. And certainly we can say that about our veterans. Our veterans go into the service, not yet veterans, but that's where they become veterans. They serve their country. They're giving their country something back. How impressive that is. But what is so impressive also is to see people come together in a community like this and give back to their community. It just overwhelms me. And, and you know, knowing Rick as I do and Lisa, I know how they give back. And having met Ernie and Helen and Sally today, knowing how much they give back to their community. It is truly impressive. You know, my favorite bumper sticker of all time I love it. I still see it regularly. I dare say all of you here have seen it. If you can read this, thank a teacher. If you can read it in English, thank a veteran. It says so much. And, but what makes this roundabout so very special is it's a memorial to the veterans. And if you haven't taken the opportunity to walk to the four quadrants and read those brass plaques, you need to. It is extremely, extremely humble. And so to all of you that give so much back to your community, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You know, it's traditional when a speaker sits down, you applaud for him or her. Don't applaud for me. Applaud for those of you that made this happen. Thank you. by none other than Major General John Borland. Uh, John is a personal friend of mine, and uh, I'm honored to be also one of his neighbors, as much as he may think otherwise. Uh, but uh, John is, uh, is a stand-up stand -up guy all in all. So come on up, John. Let's get you started. It's intimidating uh, to talk to neighbors. Uh, you all know me and there's no artifice. I just got to work really hard to be genuine with respect to comments. So I think I'll start out by asking a question that needs to be asked uh, with an answer that I certainly want to get back, all right? Especially in the presence of Bob Fort Marines. Boy, you just got to be. Don't they look sharp? I mean, they, 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 I'm an, Air Force, I'm an Air Force guy, but as I mentioned before, I love the Marine Corps. you got to have one service, combined arms guys, you know, you got to be a Marine. So in my next life, I may re-up given my haircut. Okay, but now the question. <clears throat> the question was, where were you at 2 o'clock this morning? In Battle Lodge. 
I think I think that it's a reasonable supposition to say we were all in bed asleep. At 201, however, I was up. And so was my wife Myrna, my wife of 56 years, I may mention. Thank you. I will report to her how much you think I have contributed to the marital enterprise. In any event, at 201, I was up and I was in Providence, Rhode Island and have uh, come here uh, today uh, to uh, talk just a little bit about Providence, Rhode Island, because as a, a quintessential, is that the right word? A paragon kind of word, a grandfather, a terminal grandfather with respect to pride of my granddaughter who graduated yesterday uh, from Bryant University, one of 30 recognized NCAA uh, women uh, volleyball athletes, scholars in the country, and uh, magna cum laude and all that good stuff. Uh, so we were there to make sure that we didn't miss that important ceremony, but it required, required us to get up early to go to Boston, which has to be the world's worst air, airport, avoided at all costs, uh, uh, in order to get back here home uh, to take part in this today. But what you need to know about Bryant University was they started the proceeding there yesterday just as we started with presentation of the colors and the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and the rendition of the, of the national anthem. I wish our Alto Sex Cannonball Anderley lookalike uh, was still here so we could congratulate him on his contemporary renderings today. But what they started with, what they started with, was the creation of new veterans. They swore in, especially the members of the class who are ROTC, taking their commissions and entering the military. And I thought that was such a marvelous way for this liberal arts school uh, to commence with the thousand graduates they had, with only eight, only eight, being centered, uh, front and centered, if you will, and recognized. And so it just seems so uh, in keeping with the notion uh, that I wanted to mention that to you. But since I'm talking about airplanes a little bit, I'll mention that tomorrow uh, I'll be on an airplane early going to New York City. I've got meetings in, in New York and I'll be jetting back tomorrow night. But I'm going to squeeze an hour. I'm going to squeeze an hour and go over to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and look at the third grade Dolly painting, the Corpus Hypercubus. It's been a favorite of mine for years. But you know what? The Metropolitan Museum, with its 5,000 years of art and its thousands and thousands of wonderful works of art and some not so wonderful, I don't understand a lot of this modern stuff. It looks like they throw mud at the wall. I mean, I, I like my art to be beautiful. I don't know about you guys. I like I like my flags to be beautiful and the, and the lapel pins I wear, a la Nick Parnello, to be beautiful. And we're glad to have Miss Gloria out here, too. As I say, the beauty of the Met tomorrow will fade to insignificance because I think if you have a pantheistic view of nature, and I do, uh, what's been created out here just is going to speak to our hearts for years to come. Not just our hearts, but for everyone who uh, thunders into the roundabout determined to get through at high speed <laughs> the way we all do. And, and so I add my words of congratulations to everybody who made it happen. I was out of state, conveniently, uh, on the 11th, so I was marked uh, AWOL, but I was off on uh, other duties and uh, just delighted to be a part of this today. But I come back to the notion of veterans again and the representation that it, that it makes. Uh, there's 21 million American veterans. This is the month of Memorial Day, the 151st. Memorial Day since John Logan, Major General John A. Logan, made Decoration Day slash Memorial Day. Uh, I chair a ceremony that's been going since 1997, which is the 100th anniversary of his statue being dedicated in Grant Park, uh, down about 900 South Michigan. Uh, but this 151st uh, Memorial Day, with Logan all over Illinois in terms of Logan Squares and Logan Streets. Uh, and he was a major general. I'm somewhat partial to major generals. But the, uh, the, re 
reality is that of the 21 million American vets, that means for the family of six or eight or ten extended family, almost every American has been touched by uh, the U.S. military, and yet only about 15 to 20 percent of our young people today are qualified to be in the all-volunteer force. Physically and mentally, they can't, they can't qualify uh, uh, to be in the service. And so, uh, for those of you who know about SOS America, Service Over South America, and we've got some cards and information over there, and this is a bit of a, a selling job because we think that there ought to be a program where young men uh, and young women who can take care of themselves physically uh, can come in and kind of a B-tier military, still honorable service, but be in support roles, and only for a year. Most people are willing to give a year. Uh, to the U.S. military. So we call it Service Over South America. It's going to take legislation. Uh, but imagine the circumstance where you come in in a small unit, just a hundred guys, company size unit, and you have that identity and you're with those people for that full year and you augment the all-volunteer force in federal and state agencies uh, as a unit for a year. And we'll mix the ages. So 18 different than 20, different than 23, different than 26, certainly, at least it was for me. We'll mix socioeconomic and background, uh, educational backgrounds, we'll mix geography. So America, we'll meet America again, much like we did in World War II and some of the other major conflicts. Uh, you learn a lot when you rub off on guys who come from, as I did, from the south side of Chicago or from the uh, west side of San Antonio or from, uh, uh, do they let people go into the military from San Francisco? Uh, I think we should. I think we should. Uh, all right, well, that's a serious message today about the program that can help revitalize America because America is an experiment that keeps needing to be tested. It keeps every generation needs to, uh, to to put skin in the game, if you will, if we're going to keep marching as a nation. Well, I'm pleased to be marching here with you all today. I'm grateful to be with friends and neighbors. Again, congratulate uh, the movers and the shakers that made all this uh, thing happen. And Ernie, make sure you put that picture over the table so everybody can see it after this is over. So. Uh, my high regards, uh, gratitude, and respect to you all. Uh, pleased to offer these few words today. Uh, Nick Parnello is making all kinds of, of uh, what is it, charades, Nick? <laughs> I'm, I'm in wind up here, and now you want to take the floor. Right. All right, come here. Yeah, Nick. <laughs> yeah. I just, if there ever was a warrior and a veteran, I, would, I was going to ask the general if he wouldn't mind. This, this really touches me, and he would be the, the, the soul of the veteran. Speak in the mic. Read it. So 
some of the men will stay close. A couple, perhaps, always at hand. As long as I have memory, I will think of them all every day. I am sure that when I leave this world, my last thoughts will be of my family and my comrades. Such good men. San Diego and at Paris Island. Today we have 
only 44 number chapters and only 25 actual active chapters. Any of you who are members of a post-war organization know that it takes membership to keep our posts and veteran organizations running, and it takes finances. So that's the reason why that exists. But I am proud to be here today and have an opportunity to take part in this dedication, as well as last week in the planning. By the way, our organization, you do not have to be a Marine, you do not have to be an African American to be a member of this organization. It is open to all branches of the military. And for those of you who are interested, we meet down here at Veterans Memorial Hall the first Sunday of the month at 1500, that's three o'clock civilian time. <laughs> but I wanna thank you all for being here today to help us celebrate those who paved the way for us to serve. Um, I'm trying not to go certain areas because I'll stand here and start crying in front of you uh, because of, of how I feel about how important it was for us to serve. And yet for those of, of us who came back who served and people said we did not fight a real war. Well, people died. <clears throat> and when that happens, you know, uh, you can't tell me we didn't fight a real war. But nonetheless, Thank you for receiving us. Thank you all for being here today for regardless of what branch of service, those who wanted to serve, and for your family members who have served and paved the way for us. Thank you so very much, and God bless you all. Thank you, Curly. We really appreciate that. Uh, and Curly, if you did break down up here, uh, I didn't that would be perfectly acceptable. Uh, I'm not a veteran, I almost did myself. So again, very, very humble, um, Ernie and Helen and Rick to ask me to, to uh, be master of ceremonies in this. I'm extremely, extremely humbled to be uh, amongst you. Uh, I think one of the, I almost broke down, it, it, as I studied my family tree, some of uh, the Thunberg family did not come back from World War I and World War II. Um, one is a prisoner of war by the Japanese captured in Corregidor, uh, but some other stories. But so it does, I just feel so humbled and, and honored to be amongst you. Uh, it really is truly an honor. In closing, I'd like to say that this circle represents veterans, who answered the call of service to our nation and stood for something greater than themselves. Our forces today, because of you, are the most respected in the world. God bless our veterans. God bless your families. God bless our troops. And God bless America. Thank you for attending. Thank you. For Curly, if we could have Kelvin just make a, a quick service announcement. And then after that, Kelvin, come on up. We are going to stand for closing uh, for taps. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this evening, at 1700 hours, don't you dare, <laughs> 5 o'clock civilian time, I'll be at the American Legion Post of Jefferson Horton 340 to give them awards for the anniversary of the American Legion. And they actually had their event on March the 17th, one of the actual days of the caucus in Paris. I'd also like to tell you about our chapter. Please look at our covers. The idea for this chapter to be formed originated in Beloit because of the contacts with Beloit and Rockford veterans. It became known as the Beloit, Wisconsin, Rockford, Illinois chapter. And you have to think hard of a veterans organization that actually covers two different states simultaneously. Thank you. Please stand.